Hey everybody, it's Chris with AffinityHM.com. I hope y'all are having a great evening tonight. Just thought I would come out here live with you and talk about CPAP, 12 common problems. So whether you're new on CPAP, maybe you've been using CPAP a long, long time and still just kind of having some problems. I uh, bet you the chances are real good that as we go over this list of 12, that you might find something, some little nugget of information that would be helpful to you. So all you folks that maybe some of you here actually don't use CPAP, we are going to also later in the video, we're going to kind of review some things within our website. So we sell a lot of things other than just CPAP. So I want you to see that there's a lot of discount code. So hang tight with us as we go through this. And uh, if you would, please let me know from where you are tuning in. I would love to, to see some comments on here. If you have a question as we go through the list of 12, feel free to, to, to make a comment. And if you would, please, if you're watching this on YouTube, I have just looked at some stats and understood that something like 70% of people who watch these videos are not even subscribed to the channel. So we really appreciate it and love for you to actually subscribe to the channel or if you're watching on Facebook, like the Facebook page so that you can be sure to see all of our posts and videos when we're offering discounts and providing new equipment. By the way, I just ordered a, a really cool piece of equipment for the shop that uh, I think many of you are going to like. I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but it's something that's super helpful for many, many people. So please comment. Let me know who where, where you're tuning in from, what city, what state. Um, if you're not in the U.S., let us know. I'd love to know where this video is actually going out to. All right. So also the product of the week. I'm going to be doing a video tomorrow for YouTube. The product of the week is the world's lightest and smallest CPAP battery. So it's perfect for like if you're on CPAP, you can use this battery. You can go camping with it. It's easy to pack, store, travel. Um, so without any power, you can still use your CPAP. It's really super cool. I, I actually love that. So I want to show you that. And uh, so, so right now, if you would please subscribe, give us a like on Facebook. And oh my goodness, somebody is watching Giselle. Giselle, you are from New York City. Welcome. Thank you, Giselle, for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, um, so what I want to do is go through the list of 12 common CPAP problems. This is going to be in no particular order. Um, most, most of my videos that I do, I try to rank all of these in, in a special order so that, uh, so that you, you, know, you get the biggest one at the end. But tonight, I am going to not go in any special order, and we will just go through them one at a time. And again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to just type your comment, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, or Twitter, just type your comment in and I would love to answer a question for you. CPAP problem number one, difficulty remaining consistent. So if you use CPAP, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not easy, uh, you know, week after week, day after day, month after month, year after year to just continue using that CPAP on a regular basis. It's so crucial that you do use it consistently because as you all know, if you don't use your CPAP, you're having apneas, which means you're not really sleeping well. So the next day you end up uh, feeling not so well rested, sluggish, tired, many of the same symptoms that you had prior to ever going into the sleep lab and, and getting diagnosed and starting the CPAP. For people who are new on CPAP, it's extremely difficult to remain consistent unless you just happen to just hit it right in the sweet spot and manage to get exactly the right pressure, the right mask right off the bat. If you're new on CPAP, some of the most important things to do to remain consistent is to know this, know that, that you're going to start the night off with the CPAP. At least you're going to start the night off. If you happen to only go a couple of hours of sleep, your first few nights and you're taking the mask off, it's too uncomfortable, what have you, that's okay. The, the idea is that eventually, if you start the night off with the CPAP, you'll become more and more acclimated to it over time and it will become easier and easier to do. So at least start the night off with the CPAP. Also, if you're brand new on CPAP, a lot of times we used to drive around and 
actually go to people's homes and set the CPAP up in, in, in the people's homes. And I would always recommend, and it's been helpful to many to actually use the CPAP, even though you don't need it while you're awake, uh, it's good to go ahead and use the CPAP while you are awake a little bit, especially when you're new. The goal here is to just become more acclimated to just the whole deal of having the pressure come into your airway. Watch TV a little bit while you have the CPAP and you'll get more and more used to it. And that way, whenever it's time to go to bed at night, you'll feel really used to it. It won't feel like something so new and so bizarre, you know, that it's going to keep you awake. So starting the night off with CPAP and also maybe using it some during the day. As far as remaining consistent for those who have used CPAP for a long time and you're having some consistency problems, I recommend try something new with it. Try a different mask. Try, try maybe even a, a, a different pressure. Your doctor, of course, would have to order a different pressure, but trying, trying new things and make it something new is always a, a good thing to do. All right, so that was number one. Now, number two, can't tolerate the pressure. This is something really common with people who are very new on CPAP. I can't tell you how many times I've set up someone on CPAP and set the pressure um, to the prescription that the doctor ordered for them. And we put the mask on, we turn the machine on, let's say the pressure is 12, for example. And that amount of pressure comes in at, at a pressure of 12 and boop, those eyes pop open real big. It's, it's really, as you all know, the first time you feel that CPAP, it's pretty unique and a different sort of sensation that some people do have some difficulty getting used to it. Most of the time, the pressure acclimation situation is has to do with exhaling because uh, without CPAP, you're going to breathe in and breathe out. And the amount of air that comes out of the lungs is greater than with the CPAP on because there's still that continuous positive airway pressure, not only in your airway, but that pressure is also in your lungs. And so you're not actually exhaling. It doesn't feel like you're ex exhaling as much as as you would uh, without the CPAP. So that sensation takes a little getting used to. There's a feature on almost all CPAPs now to where the, it's called the flex or maybe called the EPR. Typically the user of the CPAP can change that setting very easily. You just go into the settings and find your flex or your EPR setting and set it on the highest number that is available there. It's a comfort setting, so it has nothing to do with your prescription or your pressure setting. So you can set that wherever you like. It's the flex or the EPR. Set it at a higher number and it will feel more like you're, you're breathing all of that air out each time you exhale. That's really good for a new CPAP user to, to know. So if you can't tolerate the pressure, I think it's really good to also talk to the doctor about it. So the CPAPs have a lot of different settings and they are prescribed settings. So talk to your doctor about this pressure setting. Possibly for a limited time, the doctor may be willing to just lower that setting, let you become more used to it, more acclimated to it. And with a lower setting, you can, you can kind of tolerate it more. And then over time, maybe bump it up a little more. We've seen docs do that many, many times with CPAP. So, hi, I have been using my CPAP. This is Mr. Gregory Davis. Thanks, Gregory, that's awesome. So you, you've been using it on a regular basis. That's excellent, glad, glad to hear that. Awesome. All right, so mask leaks, that's number three, mask leaks. Lots of leaks in the mask. That can be caused from a lot of different things. Most often, a mask leak is happening when the mask size is not correct. Hi, Kimberly. How are you doing? Good to see you. If your mask size is not correct, obviously you're going to likely have a leak. When you're looking at the size of the mask, if you have a full face mask, it's real important that it, it falls at the right places. So I've seen so many people come into my shop. They were set up by somebody else other than me. And they have the top of the mask up here, or maybe the top of the, we're talking full face mask is like down here a little bit kind of on the bridge of their nose and by the way if that mask is hitting you way here at the top of the mask one thing is going to leak it's also going to give you a nasty sore right there on your nose whether you have sensitive skin or not it because you're probably tightening it up so much that it's just going to leak it's important that the top of the mask 
hits you right at this lowest point. I don't know if you can tell on this video. Um, if, if you, just the lowest point right there at the top of the bridge of the nose. That's the best place for that mass to hit. And then on the bottom, you want the bottom of the mass to be right here at the lowest point between your lip and chin. So that's really crucial. And then regarding just a nasal mask, you want the, the width of it needs to be right. So it's not actually pressing your nose in. It's just hitting here and then going right under your nose. And it's not doing this to your nose. Or obviously that will be uncomfortable and probably affect the pressure a little bit. So that's really crucial. Make sure that your mask is not leaking. Uh, mask leaks also can be actually mouth leaks. So if you have a nasal mask on, and only and you don't have a chin strap and your mouth is coming open, you're going to have a, a, a leak. And we're going to talk about dry mouth here in a little bit. That's one of the ones a little bit later down in the list. Dry mouth is a huge thing. But the if you have your mouth coming open, obviously that's a leak. So a chin strap can be real helpful. Or if you just have a nasal mask, your mouth's coming open, maybe go ahead and try a full face mask. It could be something that's helpful to you. All right. So you know, a lot of folks, I had a stat on this uh, ticking at the bottom not so long ago. It said that about 80% of people in the U.S. who have sleep apnea have not even been diagnosed. So I'm hoping that someone is watching this video right now that thinks they may have sleep apnea. If you look on our YouTube at some of the older videos, we went through a uh, list of questions called stop bang that's steel s-t-o-p-b-a-n-g that's eight questions by asking those questions and answering them you can have a real good idea as to whether or not you might have sleep apnea if you answer enough of these stop bang questions with a yes then i highly recommend go talk to your doctor about it because it's very likely you may have sleep apnea maybe maybe you need cpap could change your life all right, so do I even need CPAP? We're already on number five, you guys. And by the way, if, if you don't mind, if you are watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel, like the video. We really appreciate it. We need all the help we can get. If you're watching on Facebook, please like the page and, and maybe uh, check out our Facebook page if you're on YouTube and vice versa if you're on Facebook. But we really appreciate the connections with you guys. That's why I'm here doing this, hoping to help someone. Number six, number six is not keeping the CPAP machine and hose, water reservoir, and mask clean. It is important that it's kept clean. Now, I'm a big believer in the way God made us. He made us with a nose that captures a lot of junk, germs, etc. And, you know, we expel that out. Our whole bodies are designed to fight off uh, infections and bacteria and mold, et cetera. And, and our bodies are very, very good at it. However, if we test it a little too much, it can easily become a sinus infection or a respiratory uh, infection. So it's important to keep the CPAP equipment clean. The reasoning is mostly because of the fact of that, of that water reservoir. The water reservoir is the, really the perfect environment for mold, bacteria, and virus so if if you if you know what they they love they love this they love darkness they love water and they love warmth that's your water chamber that's the perfect environment for for pathogens so it's, it's extremely important to keep it clean the reason you're having to clean that hose and that mask is because all of those pathogens are flowing out of your humidifier through the hose and to the mask so all of that stuff is really uh, if you don't clean it, I'm not going to say you have to clean everything every day. You don't at least every other day. I would highly recommend it. Now, how do you clean it? Of course, you can clean it with warm, soapy water. Um, if you haven't had instructions on how to do that, then check in with me and we'll talk about that. That's probably another video. If you uh, if you clean it with warm, soapy water every other day or at least once a week, rinse it out real thoroughly, then you're going to be golden. You, you're really not going to have to worry. Also, change out that water. Don't leave the same water in your, your water reservoir all of the time. And crucial, you know what? I did not write this down, but I just remembered. Uh, most of you know this already. Use distilled water. The reason is, you know, by the way, I've heard people say that it's okay to use 
uh, non uh, mineral water or, or sparkling spring water, all these other types of water. But my problem is that I don't know exactly what is in that water with with the word distilled on the gallon jug. You know that it has been distilled, which means there are no minerals. The problem with minerals in the water in your CPAP reservoir is that when the water evaporates out of there, um, the H2O evaporates, but the minerals are left behind. So it forms like this, this microscopic, at first it's just microscopic film inside of the water chamber where the mold bacteria and everything can just grow and it can hide out and it's hard to clean. So those minerals are really, really bad for your um, CPAP machine in general. And especially it gives a great environment for that mold and bacteria to, to grow. So go ahead and just use distilled water, replace it every single day. Uh, best, the best thing to do. Um, we do actually sell some water, especially made for CPAPs. It's a little bit expensive. You know, this distilled water you can get at the grocery store is super cheap. Now, these that we sell are really designed for if you're traveling, they're super nice to have. There's little little bottles, so each, each day you put a new bottle in there. And uh, so, okay, let's see. I think we may have a question here. Gregory, I've been using my CPAP for almost a year. I'm a stomach sleeper, but my CPAP only allows me to, uh, to sleep on my back. Okay, I'm going to put your question up here, Gregory. My, C, my CPAP only allows me to only sleep on my back. Sometimes the CPAP, how often do you have to clean the CPAP? Okay, I think we just covered that. I, I didn't see your question in time. He asked this before I, I covered that. But cleaning it at least once a week is super, super good. As far as sleeping on your, your back, you know what? You, you don't have to sleep on your back with the CPAP. One of the great things about auto CPAP is that if you have an auto CPAP, Gregory, the doc is going to give you us a range of pressures to set it at. So depending on how your airway is at the time, if you're sleeping on your on your stomach, you got your head turned and you may need a little more pressure to maintain that airway open. But the machine would be able to compensate for that and take care of that. So check with your doctor. Double check me. Make sure that I'm telling you right. I already know I am, but I want you to talk to your doctor. And, 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 you know, you should be able to sleep on your, your stomach, your side, uh, upside down, right side up. Really, it shouldn't matter. Uh, as long as you have that CPAP on and in place, it will work just fine. Some people don't like to sleep on their stomach if they have a full face mask because the mask is a little bulky. And then you, you lay your, your head sideways on the pillow and it sort of pushes the mask out of place. That can be a problem. However, they do make pillows that are the little pieces of the pillows cut out to sort of provide a place for the mask to rest without, you know, getting out of place. So that's that's a that's an idea for you. All right. Good. Thanks for the question, Gregory. I hope that helps a little bit. Giselle, Giselle, I hate cleaning it with a solution vinegar and ivory soap and ivory soap in the hose. Thinking of buying a cleaning machine for it, but which one? That's a great question. We sell four different cleaning machines. The best way to answer that question is to ask this question first. If you were going to get a cleaning machine, would you prefer one that uses ozone to clean or one that uses UV light to clean? So if you're going to go with ozone, there's three different ones on our site. If you're going to go with UV light, the only one is the Lumen Bullet. The question gets a little more complicated depending on what hose, what CPAP machine you use, and your, your actual lights. Do you travel a lot? So there's some different ones that are designed for travel, et cetera. So feel free to um, ask more questions, Giselle, or if you want to call our office, you can, you can see our phone number. We're going to go into our website here in a little bit. You'll see our phone number there. You can give us a call um, in the morning, and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. We'll figure it out. All right. So good, Giselle. She uses distilled water. That is excellent. Here is Russ. I've had good luck with placing CPAP in, in the crook of the arm near the elbow. Used it for eight years. That's an excellent idea. Just kind of like this. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a good idea, Russ. All right. So let's go on to the next question. I mean, the next uh, of the 12 CPAP problems. Oh, yeah, face lines. Now, for me personally, 
if I've got a face line, I and mean, what I'm talking about is, you know how that mask, uh, the head gear, you wake up in the morning, you take all of that off, and then you got this this line on your face. It doesn't bother me. I, I would say uh, it just doesn't bother me. Uh, if anybody has a problem with it, they see my face, they wonder what's going on. Uh, I, it, it wouldn't bother me. However, the, the face lines have, for some people, been a problem. I think different people's skin is different. So some people have such sensitive skin that it is going to just create a face line no matter what. However, there are some folks who I think they are putting their mask on too tight and so tight that, I mean, it's just jam packed on there. And it's uh, for one thing, I'm sure it's very uncomfortable. So what I would recommend is uh, go ahead and put that mask on when you're ready to go to bed. Put the mask on very, very loosely, like loosen up those little Velcro straps a lot so that it's, it's just barely there. Even the fact that, you know, when you're going to turn your machine on, you know, it's going to leak. Put it on that loosely at first. Turn the machine on. Yes, it's going to leak. And then just gradually tighten it a little bit, just enough so that the mask stops leaking. Once the leak stops, then look up. Look down, look left, look right. If you don't spring a leak, then that's the perfect uh, amount of tension on the CPAP mask. If you spring a leak, maybe tighten it a little more and then do the move your head test again until you get it just right. And that might possibly do the trick to uh, alleviate those, um, those mask lines on your face. All right, so we've got a question here. We've got, a, I think, a new CPAP user. Hi, Cindy. I started using mine and I'm wondering if you submerge the whole hose in water to clean, if it is the one with, with a, with it that looks uh, like a Wi-Fi thing on the end. Okay. Great question. That is an excellent question. Yes. You can put that into the, in, the heated hose can go in the water, the little deal that you're seeing on the end. And so if anyone is using a heated hose, whether it's the dream station or the rest med air sense 10, you're going to notice at the end of the hose that attaches to the CPAP, there's a little deal that's different on the two different ones, but it just is a, sort of an electronic piece. What that is, is actually a temperature measurement. So the hose is able to measure the temperature in the room versus the temperature inside of that tube. This is what the heated hose is doing. It's trying to make it so that the, the difference between those two temperatures in the room and in the hose isn't too great because once the temperature between the room and the hose is too great, then we get little water droplets in the hose that causes a problem. So heated hoses came out prior to that. We had a big problem with CPAP. It was always difficult to get enough humidity while not getting a lot of water droplets in the hose. And they came out with a heated hose and it, it resolves, I don't know about half of the situation, but if your room is super cool at night, keeping it really cold with the AC or if the, just the, the climate is cold and the, the, the humidity is high in the hose, you're going to get water droplets, whether you have a heated hose or not. But back to your question, Cindy, yes, you can, you can wash the whole thing with the warm soapy water in the sink. Not a problem at all. Just make sure it's really good and dry before you, you put it back in. Kimberly's got another thing here. How many times a week should I be using the Lumen and Bullet to clean my CPAP? You can get away with doing it every other day. That's that's perfectly fine. You don't have to do it every single day. Some people like to do it every single day. I'm a bit of a clean freak. I would probably do it every single day. The thing is, it takes mold and bacteria about 48 to 72 hours to grow into a colony within that, that humidifier and within your hose and all. The colony has to grow big enough to actually cause an infection. You know, at first, it it's not really strong enough to cause an infection. Of course, that could have some something to do with your own immune system, uh, your, your own immunity, your, your immune system, how strong it is. So depending on, you know, a lot of different factors. But I would say every day is great. Every other day is fine. Longer than every other day, you're starting to stretch it. Definitely got to do it at least once a week for sure. So that's how I would describe that. All right. So that was face lines. We're already on number seven. Okay, Gregory. Gregory has another question. All right, Gregory. Um, if I get a cold or flu, can I use the CPAP if I can't breathe right? Well, sometimes with a cold, it depends on how bad it is. 
but a cold often is really just uh, some swelling in the in the blood vessels that are in your nose so of course you got the congestion and everything you can blow your nose or clean it out with a little little um, saline you know they sell it's just nasal saline i'm not talking afrin or any of that stuff but just salt water nasal saline you can clean your nose out real good with that and often the the cpap pressure will sort of push aside the, the blood vessels and open it all up. So I've had people who had colds that are kind of mild and put the CPAP on and everything just sort of clears up. So that's a possibility. However, if it's so bad that that's not clearing it up, then you, you, you may have to have a full face mask so that the air is at the, the CPAP pressure is coming into your mouth and uh, maintaining your airway that way. So it's not a bad idea to have an extra mask on hand for that kind of a situation. Also, if you have a cold, your doctor might prescribe some medications that will kind of clear that up so that you can use your CPAP, especially if you have some severe or moderate um, sleep apnea. So that's a great question. Thank you, Gregory. Okay, so we're going into, how's everybody doing tonight? Y'all doing good? Thank y'all for being here. I really appreciate it. Hey, if you're watching this on our YouTube or on our Facebook page, please like the page or please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I just found out today that about 70% of people who watch these YouTube videos aren't even subscribed to the channel. So it would be much appreciated if you got time to do that, if you feel like it. All right. Traveling with CPAP is a chore. That's number eight. We're on number eight. Traveling with CPAP is a chore. If you're new on, uh, to using CPAP, then it's very possible you might not know this there's a CPAP on every single plane I promise you every single plane and there's probably more than one so regarding TSA and all of that don't sweat it at all they are going to know what that is and I would recommend the CPAP as a carry-on uh, they're pretty durable machines but have you seen these guys when they're throwing the luggage uh, you know it's your CPAP machine, so I highly recommend it as a, as a carry-on. So as a chore, if you are, are using, let's say you've got a rest med air or a dream station, and you want to take the heat and humidifier portion of the machine with you as well, you want to use the water, you have a little bit of a dilemma, you have to fly in, find your hotel, go to the store, buy some distilled water, and you know, plus the bulkiness of it all. So if you can get away without using the humidifier, that would be nice. Some people can't and won't be compliant without the humidifier. Uh, however, some people can do just fine for a few nights or maybe even a week without the humidifier. So there's an idea for you. Hook your machine up without the humidifier. Maybe even test that out before your trip to see, you know, how do, how do I do when I don't have water in this system? And I will tell you, you know, back in 1988, when we first started setting up CPAP, and yeah, I'm that old, uh, they didn't even have humidifiers for the CPAP. CPAP machines were just pressure, and it was always just one pressure too, no humidifier. Later on, they started realizing that compliance is much lower because the air is so dry and it's uncomfortable. So humidifiers became the norm. So I would guess everyone out here right now has a humidifier most likely. And uh, so, you know, there's another option. There are travel CPAPs. They're a little pricey, but they're excellent little machines. Um, so we have some on our website if you want to check that out. All right. Here's one of one of the big ones. OK, you guys, thanks for sticking around. We're really getting into some some good stuff right now about CPAP. By the way, I'm wondering if any anyone so far has heard, have you heard anything that's helpful for you? I would love to know. It helps me. I need a little motivation. But I, I, I will tell you one really huge one is belly bloating. So you're using CPAP and, uh, you know, you're using CPAP and then in the morning you're burping a lot, a lot of gas. You're, you know, burping and, you know, the other, and it's very uncomfortable. It can even be painful to have a lot of air in your stomach. What is happening is maybe, maybe obvious, maybe not, but what's happening is as you have that air pressure coming into your airway, you know, you have your trachea and your bronchi that goes into your lungs, but right there close by in here is the esophagus. So it's like it branches off right around in here. 
And some of the air, obviously not all of the CPAP air is going into your stomach, but some of that air, you may be swallowing a little bit of that air through the night, but some of that air is making it into your stomach, thus causing a, a problem for you. So typically what's going on there is it could just be positioning of your, of your head while you're sleeping. Sometimes it's helpful to have your head down in a position like this. The air is more likely in that case to go into your lungs versus into your esophagus. So that's really, really helpful to know that. Um, also the flex setting can be helpful. So you've got, let's say you got a pressure of a 12 or 14 or something like that, or whatever the pressure is, I guess it really doesn't matter. It depends on you. But the flex pressure or the EPR on your CPAP machine is a setting that you can change without a prescription. It's a setting made for comfort. So get your manual out, find out where that setting is, go into your machine and increase the level of the EPR or the flex. And that will make it easier to exhale which will cause less of that, of that air to go into, into your belly. And then finally, talk to your doctor about it. If you're having this, this problem on a regular basis, then definitely talk to the uh, doctor. It could be that a pressure can be changed, a mask can be changed. Sometimes you can get a, um, a collar that kind of holds your, hold your head in a, uh, the correct position that might make a difference for that, for that bloating and aerophasia. Okay, we kind of covered this next one, number 10. A little bit. Um, number 10 is water droplets in the mask. Hey, if you ever had a water droplet in your mask, say yes. So water droplets in the mask are part of it. That's just going to happen at times. Ways to solve that is if you don't have a heated tube, get a heated tube. Another thing you can do is actually decrease the temperature of the humidifier. That's a setting. Again, you can make that change. Uh, within your CPAP. So maybe decrease the set, the setting. If you're getting a lot of water droplets or if you just don't want any water droplets, you can even, a lot of people don't know this, but you can even turn off your uh, humidifier, keep water in it, but turn off the heat portion of it. And it will still provide a little bit of humidity, probably somewhere around 10 to 20% humidity, even with no heat. Then every time you turn up the heat, obviously the amount of humidity is going to rise. If you have a really cold room, you could raise the temperature of the room. And then I have had a, a customer patient who tried this and it worked. And that is to put the CPAP kind of instead of right here at the head of the bed, put it a little further down and then let the CPAP tubing run underneath the blanket before it comes to you. And what that's going to do is just kind of equalize the temperature, uh, you know, between the hose and the room and uh, kind of eliminate some of that. So, all right, Kimberly's got another question. Let's see, Kimberly. Oh, by the way, I have used the Lumen with my CPAP and with other things and love it just to let you know. Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate that. You know, I forgot to mention that. That's really a cool thing about the, the Lumen that I like a lot is that is that with the Lumen, you can uh, you can clean a lot of a lot of different things with it. Um, I've got one. I clean my cell phone, my keys, my glasses, and it's nice. It's nice to have my wife loves it also. All right. So now let's get into the dry mask. Okay. Gregory had another comment here. Thank you guys for commenting. I appreciate it. Gregory. Uh, yes. One night I forgot to add more water and it dried out and I was breathing burning air all night. Is that too dangerous for my lungs? Actually, it's not dangerous for your lungs, Gregory. That's a great question, too. It's not dangerous. It's just uncomfortable, very uncomfortable for some folks who are very sensitive. It's just drying everything out. Uh, it can, like if you had lung congestion, it can cause that congestion to become so thick that you can't really cough it out. So that's important. Always make sure you're well hydrated. Your body is well hydrated as well. And that, that definitely helps out a lot with the whole CPAP thing. All right. Now we're going to talk about dry mouth. Talk about drying out. Dry mouth. Anybody had dry mouth before with using the CPAP? Can I get a yes? Can I get an amen? Dry mouth is, is really a huge problem with CPAP because there's so many different things that can cause the dry mouth, first of all. And then there's some, some really good solutions um, for, the, for the dry mouth. I'm wondering if that's a problem. Is anybody having that problem with the, with the dry mouth? I don't see any comments about it. So 
I would say the most common reason to have a dry mouth is uh, you probably use a nasal pillow or just a nasal mask and simply your mouth is coming open. Russ has that problem infrequently. Uh, your mouth is coming open and if your mouth comes open while you're sleeping with the CPAP in your nose, then the air goes in your nose and right out your mouth. First of all, if that's happening, it usually wakes folks up, you know, sometimes a kind of an uncomfortable way to wake up. If that's happening, you're also not getting your therapy. Obviously, the, there's no pressure. You know, there's no way to keep a pressure in your airway if your mouth is coming open. So the answer for that might be a chin strap. Or again, you can actually get one of those soft cervical collars that comes around your neck, you know, like people that are in the car crashes, but just get a soft one if you decide to do this. And it can help, kind of help keep your chin closed uh, while you're using your CPAP. Another thing is, again, that flex and EPR setting on your CPAP machine. Assuming you got that setting, then that can be raised and it can actually uh, make a difference with your mouth coming open or not. You know, chin straps are, are good, but a lot of times that even with a chin strap, you're still going to have air coming out of your mouth. So you may have to go to a full face mask um, over your, your mouth and nose. And by the way, unfortunately, even if you go to a full face mask, it still could be that uh, sometimes with a full face mask, even if it's fitted well, your jaw and everything just kind of comes out of place and just a leak is created. And with these machines, if, if a leak is happening in your CPAP mask, the machine is going to start pushing more pressure, which, uh, you know, trying to achieve that, that airway pressure that we're looking for to keep your airway open, the machine is going to drive more pressure. And actually it's kind of like this bad cycle that you can get into if you, if you're having a leak. I've seen people, you know, I was talking about hydrating. Sometimes the dry mouth is, is not related to a leak, but just related to the pressure and the breathing. And uh, there, there, there's something called uh, xylemint that might be a good idea to use. Um, also, hydrating, drinking water. Keep a glass of water handy, you know, so if you're waking up uh, to go to the restroom or just waking up with the dry mouth, you can drink a little bit of water and that might help out a lot. So the dry mouth is something that can be uh, beat, and uh, I hope that it, some of these ideas work for you. Wow, we have already got down to the very last one. All right, so that's 11, and number 12 is many people have claustrophobia. And I've even heard of folks who use a CPAP for years and years, and after using the CPAP for years and years, then develop sort of a claustrophobic sort of feeling about using the CPAP. So it's one that uh, can be a little hard to overcome. I have had customers who had to actually take some medication to kind of overcome that. But outside of doing that, here's an idea for you. If you're if you're using a really big bulky mask, you know what they make masks with a little deal up here and all this stuff, you know, going on, then obviously that's that's a lot, you know, going on, especially you open your eyes and you see all this, that would make me claustrophobic. The, the, the newer masks are, are far more sleek and easier to use, lighter, less covering the eyes. Nasal pillows are great. You've seen the dream wear. It's just this little deal under your nose. So it just can get, get rid of that claustrophobic feeling because I think, I think that the claustrophobic is anything kind of up here, kind of blocking your eyes. If you can keep it all down here, it, it just feels more comfortable. And then what we talked about in the beginning of the video to where using it some during the day and getting more acclimated to it can be can be helpful also. So try that. Even if you use CPAP for years and you're having some problems with kind of going to sleep while using the CPAP, maybe use it a little bit during the day. Watch a TV show, read a book uh, while you're using your CPAP, and it might alleviate some of that claustrophobic. So let's see. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions at all? I don't see any questions. So if I could, I would like to show you guys. I want to show show off the website a little bit. So what I'm going to do is try this. Bear with me because I have no idea how to do this. I'm going to just give it a shot and see if I can share a screen with you. So I think I can show you our website and there's something there that I want everyone to see. Okay. Yeah, this is actually pretty easy. 
I guess you can probably now see see my website. Would somebody comment and let me know? Are you seeing my website right now on the screen? Looking for a comment. I just need to know this is working. I'm pretty sure it is, but not 100% sure. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Kimberly. All right. So, first of all, when you see this on our website, 15 to 30% off, we have something new. If you want to check it out, we have actually backup batteries. This is going to be tomorrow night. I'm going to show you this battery, right? What? Wait, who is that guy? Okay, that's me. All right, I'm going to show you this battery right here. It's $269. It will power most CPAPs through the night uh, for one night if it's fully charged up. And it's super small. It's lightweight. It's the actually the lightest weight C, uh, CPAP battery that's out there. And by the way, you can use it for other things. After we had Hurricane Sally here, we had one of these. I actually just kind of stole it off the shelf. So, And it's mine now. <laughs> But it is the only reason that we were able to actually have our phones because our power was out for two weeks here. At, and uh, we're down, down south in Alabama. So here's the chart for this particular CPAP battery. And it's really great to have, especially if you wanted to go camping or something like that. And I don't know if you noticed this, but check this out. You can get 20% off. There's the, C, the, the coupon code. And just one more thing I want to show you real quick is uh, travel CPAP, portable CPAP machines. These are really great. We've got the Dream Go. And look at this price. This is ridiculous. $1,030. That is just not cool. So we've got a coupon code for that. You can get that for half price right there. We have to put that as $1,030 because the company that sells these to us require us to have that on there. Uh, so we are getting around it by, by uh, just giving you a huge discount. <laughs> so uh, don't tell anybody, but there it is. That's the that's the discount. So thank you guys for for being here. If anyone has any questions, please please uh, before we get off here, I'll be happy to answer a question for you. If anyone has one, I think we went over everything I wanted to. But please do. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do go go over there and hit subscribe. Give us a thumbs up on the video, maybe a like over on Facebook or like the Facebook page. We really appreciate it. I'm going to continue doing this every Tuesday night. If you have suggestions for what we should cover during this video, please, please let me know. I would love to cover anything that you want us to cover. And uh, so Without further ado, I think I'm going to say good night unless anybody has a, has a question. I believe uh, Richard just asked a question of Giselle. He uses the Purify 03. I chose it over the Sleep 8 because with the Sleep 8, you have to replace the bag. That's right, that bag every three months. And with the Sleep 8, it's about $15. Of course, you get a discount. It ends up being somewhere in the neighborhood of $60 a year if you're using the Sleep 8. It does have a benefit, the Sleep 8 bag has a charcoal filter on it so that the ozone, whenever the ozone is coming out of the bag, it reverts right then back into regular oxygen. But that's excellent. Thank you, Richard. All right. Hope y'all are having a nice evening. And I hope that everyone sleeps super well tonight. It's Tuesday night. Beautiful weather down here in Alabama. How's the weather up there with you guys or wherever you might be? I know somebody's in New York City, they said earlier. So really, that's all I've got, you guys. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Thank you again. Please communicate with me. Let me know if there's something you'd like for me to cover in one of these videos. But join us every Tuesday night. It's going to be at 7 o'clock every Tuesday night. And we'd love to see you continue to be a part of this. Thank you guys so much. All right. Y'all have a good one. See you next week.